In this video, I want to talk about array oversizing. Let's say you're thinking about getting a solar array that can generate up to 5 kilowatts of power. It's logical to think that you should get a 5 kilowatt inverter to match, but I want to show you that having an array larger than your inverter makes a lot of sense, and for more reasons than you might think. Hi there, I'm Gary, and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. When you're thinking about getting solar panels on your roof, one of the first questions is how many? Aesthetics will certainly play a part. On this roof, we can easily fit 10 panels. But there is space to add more. We just need to respect any roof margin regulations that your country may have in place. So, with a slight adjustment, we can fit another six panels. It looks like that's the maximum number of panels we can get, but sometimes, if you're a little creative, you can get even more panels on your roof. Here, if we place all the panels in landscape instead of portrait, we can get another four panels onto this roof. Now, if these panels were 450 watts each, that would make a total array size of 9 kilowatts peak. But, you might be thinking, that's all well and good, but now I'm going to need a much bigger inverter than I was planning. Perhaps a 9 kilowatt inverter to match the panels, instead of, say, 6 kilowatts. And my local energy network provider might even limit me to a 6 kilowatt inverter anyway. So what's the point of having more panels? Well, I want to show you in this video there are quite a number of benefits by having your solar array size bigger than your inverter size. And don't worry, by oversizing you won't blow up your inverter on a very sunny day, so long as you respect the array oversizing parameters that we'll talk about later. OK, let's get into the detail, and we'll be using this 9 kilowatt peak solar array and a 6 kilowatt inverter as our example system. So what does a 9 kilowatt peak solar array actually mean in terms of solar generation? Well, it helps if you live in an area where there is a lot of sun. And of course, the time of year is important. In summer, the sun is at its highest point in the sky. The time of day is also important, and that highest point only happens in the middle of the day. Then there's the orientation of your roof. Does it point towards the sun at the middle of the day? And even the pitch of your roof is important. What angle is it to the sun? If it's cloudy that day, then you won't achieve highest generation. And if it's too hot, you won't either. Not a lot of people realise this. Optimum panel efficiency is typically measured at 25 degrees centigrade. Your panels must be relatively clean as well. And finally, as the years tick by, their performance slowly degrades, maybe half a percent a year. So that's quite a lot of things that have to be right in order to get peak generation from our example 9 kilowatt array. But given that we have oversized our array, let's see what the effect of that is in practice. And to do that, we'll consider time of year and also time of day. Here's a chart showing the level of expected solar generation throughout the day during the summer. And as you can see, that at midday we're able to achieve 9 kilowatts, the peak value of the array. But remember, our inverter is only 6 kilowatts, so what does that mean for this generation? Well, the generation is clipped at 6 kilowatts by the inverter, meaning that we lose everything above that. On first sight, it looks like we've lost a third of our generation capacity, but that's not the case. What we need to do is perform a calculation based on the difference in areas. And actually, it turns out we've only lost 19%, meaning we retain 81%. And remember, that's for a bright sunny day with no clouds at any part of the day. Let's now look at the situation in winter, when the sun is lower in the sky and the days are shorter. As you can see, our solar generation is a lot less. But actually, with a 6 kilowatt inverter, we've managed to retain 90% of what we would have done with a 9 kilowatt inverter. And if it's cloudy, or the panels are dirty, or several years old, then we might easily be under the 6 kilowatts, meaning that it won't make a difference if we're using a 6 kilowatt inverter or a 9 kilowatt inverter. We'll retain 100% of that generation. So you can see that by oversizing your array against your inverter size, it doesn't affect the level of generation that you'll get over the whole year by too much at all. This also allows you to maximise the amount of solar on your roof without having to buy a more expensive inverter. Oversizing your array also brings about many other benefits too. But before we get to those, please don't forget to like this video if you're getting something from it. And if you subscribe at the same time, you'll be the first in line to see the videos that I'm working on next. Many thanks. 
Now you might not know this, but inverters work more efficiently near their power limit. If we look again at the power generation throughout a sunny day with a 9 kilowatt inverter and map on some efficiency bands, you'll see that this inverter works at its highest efficiency for about 4 hours. By replacing this inverter with a 6 kilowatt one, despite the clipping, it's now operating at its highest efficiency for more than double that time. That means the 81% we calculated earlier is actually a conservative figure. It's likely to be a few percent higher. Oversizing is great for those with solar arrays on east and west roofs. And this is because of the way the sun tracks across the sky during the day. In the morning, your east array will start generating power quite early and continue until the afternoon, at which point your west array starts generating and continues until the sun starts to set in the evening. The effect of this is to lengthen and flatten the overall daily generation profile, as you can see here. And this means that each of those arrays can be very large without requiring a large inverter. And more than that, because of the longer, flatter profile, you can see that the inverter operates for a very long time at its highest efficiency. Oversizing is also great if you have a DC coupled battery. If we look at how a string inverter works, there are two sides to it, a DC side and an AC side. The panels within your solar array generate DC power, which is fed into the inverter. The inverter then converts that power to AC and supplies this to your home appliances. And we saw earlier that any solar generation greater than the AC power limit of the inverter is clipped. But here's the thing, if you have a home battery connected to your inverter on the DC side, called a DC coupled battery, then your inverter can send that extra power straight to your battery. And this is because so long as the extra power stays on the DC side, it's not affected by the AC power limit. Watch though, because as soon as your battery becomes full, then your inverter is not able to do any more with the extra power, and so it's clipped once more. If you want to find out more about DC and AC coupled batteries and their relative benefits, check out my video here, which covers all this and a whole lot more. Finally, in some countries it can be quicker and easier to get your solar installation if you keep your inverter under a certain size. For example, in the UK there are two schemes as follows. The G98 is the most straightforward. Installations up to 3.6 kilowatts per phase are automatically approved by your local distribution network operator, or DNO as they're referred to, so you can start immediately. Your installer will make an application on your behalf within 28 days of generation equipment being installed. The second scheme, G99, is more involved. Applications must be made in advance, ideally before you purchase any equipment, just in case your application is rejected. Your DNO will then make an assessment, and that may take several weeks or even months. And even if your application is accepted after that assessment, there may be an additional fee payable. And your DNO may also place a limit on the export that is below the limit of what your equipment is able to provide. In my own case, my DNO, SSEN, took over four months to respond, and I had to pay an extra £360. So by keeping your inverter size to 3.68 kilowatts, you'll avoid the complications of G99 certification, and you can get your solar installation quickly and painlessly. But you might find yourself overly limited in a couple of key respects that I'm about to cover. Okay, so we've talked about a number of reasons why oversizing your array is a good idea, but there are a couple of what I think are very important factors to consider depending on your inverter size. The first is to do with export, where you can get paid for any excess solar generation you send back to the grid. A smaller inverter, of course, means you're more limited on the power that you can export. And on a sunny summer's day, you might welcome a larger inverter if you're on an energy tariff that pays handsomely for every kilowatt hour you can export. And if you have a DC coupled battery, a larger inverter can come in really handy if your country operates demand flexibility schemes because in those you can get paid up to 15 times what you normally pay for that energy. If that all sounds a bit crazy, check out this video on demand flexibility schemes here. And the second is to do with the ability of your inverter to cover home appliance load. This chart shows how the power draw changes across the day for a typical household. There is a peak around breakfast time and another in the early evening. Let's say the inverter has a limit of 3.68 kilowatts. We can draw a line on the chart to show that limit across the day, like so. All of the power requirement underneath that line can be met by the inverter, assuming there is sufficient solar generation 
and or battery charge available. But any power draw above that line cannot be met by the inverter regardless of the solar generation or battery charge available. So any power draw above 3.68 kilowatts has to be met by the grid, which of course will cost you money. This can be mitigated somewhat with an AC coupled battery instead of a DC coupled battery. And if you'd like to know more about that, check out the battery video I mentioned earlier. Okay, so by how much can you oversize your solar array? Well, it depends on the manufacturer of the inverter you've chosen. Most inverters allow oversizing of 150%, meaning your solar array can be up to 150% of the size of the inverter. Here we have an example of a 5 kilowatt inverter, which can support up to a 7.5 kilowatt peak array. But you'll find solar edge inverters typically allow up to 200% oversizing. A solar edge inverter of the same size can support an array up to 10 kilowatts peak. It's worth checking though for any country specific legislation or prerequisites if you're receiving any government subsidy as there may be oversizing restrictions there. Australia has such for their small technology certificate subsidy for example. If you'd like to try it out, I developed this utility that allows you to model the effects of different size solar arrays and inverter limits. It's called Solarasma and everyone who signs up to my Patreon gets access to it. Here you can see the clipping in action and the effects that it has on everything. And the utility is able to model multiple arrays as well, like the east-west configuration that we saw earlier in the video. I hope all this information has been useful to you and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thanks for watching.